Welcome to the CTTP training videos. R.449A Calibration of Asphalt Content Gauge This video demonstrates the calibration procedure for a nuclear asphalt content gauge using a Troxler Model 3241C gauge. Collect representative samples of aggregate and binder for the approved mix design. Oven dry the aggregates, cool and fractionate if necessary. Blend four 8,000 gram aggregate batches according to the job mix formula. For more information on batching, please see the CTTP video on batching. Heat the batch samples to the mixing temperature shown on the approved mix design. Remove one of the batches from the oven. Zero an AC gauge sample pan on the scale. Remove the sample pan from the scale, then mix the aggregate and fill the pan half full with the batched hot dry aggregate. Using a scoop, trowel, or spoon, lightly tamp the aggregate to eliminate air voids. Pay special attention to the corners and take care to avoid segregation. Drop the pan from a height of about one inch to settle the aggregate. Slightly overfill the pan with aggregate. Lightly tamp the aggregate, including the corners. Using a straight edge, strike off the aggregate level flush with the top of the pan rim. Place the full pan on the scale platform and record the net weight of the aggregate. Verify that the temperature of the aggregate is between 200 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Record this temperature. Empty the aggregate back into the original container and remix all of the aggregate by turning it over at least three times using a scoop. Refill the sample pan in the same manner, filling it in two layers and striking it off flush with the rim of the pan. Record the second net weight of the aggregate. Verify that the temperature of the aggregate is between 200 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit and record this value. Verify that the two net weights are within 25 grams of each other. If not, repeat the pan loading and weighing process until two samples are within 25 grams of each other. Use the last sample's net weight as the calibration weight. Place the gauge at least 30 feet from other radiation sources. The area around the gauge shall be kept free of hydrogenous materials such as water, plastics, or asphalt during use. Turn on the gauge and allow it to warm up. For calibrations, set the time to 16 minutes by pressing the time button and selecting option 4. Run a 16 minute background count by pressing the BKG button then select Yes to run a new background count. Press the Start key and move away from the gauge at least 3 feet. Verify that the new background count is within 1% of the previous background count. If so, accept the background count and record the value in a daily log. If not, repeat the 16-minute background counts until the requirement is met. Place the sample pan with aggregate in the gauge and close the door. Press the Start key to begin a 16-minute test. Record the measured count. This count may be compared to a production sample to check for changes in the aggregate. This pan may now be emptied if desired. Mix the remaining samples at the optimum, optimum minus 1%, and optimum plus 1% binder contents. The optimum binder content is shown on the approved mix design. Please see the CTTP Mixing Asphalt Specimens video for more information. After mixing, zero a gauge sample pan on the scale, then fill the pan with the asphalt mixture. Remember to keep track of which pan contains which binder content. Fill the pan half full with the asphalt mixture and tamp lightly, being careful to include the corners. Then, fill the pan until full and tamp lightly, again including the corners. 
Place the sample pan on the scale platform. Add more of the asphalt mixture until the net weight matches the calibration weight within 5 grams. Compress the asphalt mixture with the leveling plate until the surface is even with the rim of the pan. Place the filled sample pan on the scale and verify that the net weight is still within 5 grams of the calibration weight. Repeat the mixing and filling processes for the other two binder contents. After each pan is filled, place it in a preheated oven at the desired calibration temperature. The calibration temperature must be between 200 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Choose a temperature that is easily achieved in the field, yet allows you to place the mix in the pan tightly. Bring the samples to the calibration temperature. Start a new calibration by pressing the Calib key on the gauge. Select option 3 for a new calibration. Select option 1 when using a sample pan. Select option 2 for a gauge derived calibration. If a 16 minute background count has not been taken, press yes to take one and follow the on screen prompts. If a 16 minute background count has already been taken, press the no key. Enter the calibration weight and press the enter key. Each pan's net weight should be within 5 grams of this weight. Enter the number of asphalt mixture calibration samples and press enter. Do not count the blank aggregate sample. Enter the percent asphalt binder content of the first calibration sample and press the enter key. Remove the first calibration sample from the oven and measure its temperature. Record this value as the calibration temperature, which must be between 200 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Load the first calibration sample into the gauge, then close and latch the door. Press the start key and move away at least three feet. When the test is complete, record the counts and press the enter key. Enter the percent asphalt binder content of the second calibration sample and press enter. Remove the first calibration sample from the gauge and return it to the oven in case it is needed again. Load the second calibration sample into the gauge. Press the start key to begin the count and move away from the gauge at least three feet. Record the counts and press the enter key. Enter the percent asphalt binder content of the third calibration sample and press enter. Remove the second calibration sample from the gauge, return it to the oven, and load the third calibration sample into the gauge. Press the start key and move away at least three feet. Record the counts and press enter. Remove the third calibration sample from the gauge and return it to the oven. After all calibration samples are complete, the gauge will display a fit coefficient, which must be at least 0.995. If the fit coefficient is less than 0.995, repeat the calibration with the sample pans rotated 180 degrees. If the fit coefficient is acceptable, press the Yes key to review the data. Verify the calibration data by selecting option 1 for screen output. Record the net calibration weight and background count. Press yes to continue. Record the constants A1, A2, and A3. Press yes to continue. Review each point and record the differences if needed. Then press the No key to finish. The calibration is now activated but not stored. Press Yes to store the calibration by using the digits in the RDOT mix design number. As an example, HM123-19 would be entered as 12319 in the gauge. Press Enter to store. If desired, you may enter a second number as the mix ID or leave this blank and press enter. The gauge is now calibrated and ready for use. Please visit our website at cttp.org for other training videos and modules.